here about that. <laughs> it's just like it. <clears throat> All right, we are now joined by the winning team of today's Daytona 500. We have our driver, Denny Hamlin, crew chief, Chris Gabehart for the number 11 FedEx Express Toyota. This is Denny's second Daytona 500. This is Chris's first cup start as crew chief and first win. We will open it up to questions for these two. Please raise your hand. We'll start here with Matt. Matt Weaver, Auto Week. Uh, this is a question for both of you guys. Um, Kyle was in here earlier and said that he was trying to coordinate the um, the restart plan, the restart before, and that you guys had declined. And then he said that once you guys got the lead, that you guys were more willing to try to negotiate <laughs> Um, a plan with the 18. What went into both of those restarts and the planning back and forth with them? Yeah, I think the first one, I, I'm not sure if it was a green-white checkered or not, but it was inside five to go. And um, I thought that, you know, any deals and stuff like that, our original deal was inside 10 to go. After that, you kind of race. Um, we kept going. We, we had, I think, a, a restart with seven or eight to go. We worked together. Uh, and then they asked um, – I think they asked, and we said, you know, let's just race it out. And uh, that was with uh, the second-to-last restart. We, we decided we wanted to kind of race it out, being on the front row. I kind of liked, and I was hoping he was going to take the line that he chose, and he did. Um, so that put us in a good position. Um, you know, everything that I've – all the experience that I've had, I knew what line I wanted to be in, and it was going to be a 50-50 shot whether um, he put us in that line or not. Um, and, and when he did – uh, we got the lead, the caution came out, and then we were fine, you know, just going ahead and staying racing like we were. Uh, I knew the top line was the line I was going to choose, and um, they actually came over, I think they came uh, to my spotter and said, hey, do you want to do the, do you want to drop down in front of us? Uh, we're open to do that. And when I saw him and the 22 lined up, I was like, well, absolutely, I, sure, I definitely do, we'll do that. So I thought that was the best move for us, but it still gave him a great opportunity to win because he got a great run on us on the back stretch and we had to block it. And so I, I think that he probably knew the same thing that I did is that that bottom lane deteriorates really quick at the end of these races. I, I've been on the bottom lane three or four times here on the with on a green white checker and lost the race every time because it was just not the place to be. So I thought that he, he was actually pretty smart in thinking that, hey, if, if I drop down in front of him, that puts him in the position to go on offense against me. So um, if he's on the inside of me and I'm right there on his door, there's no offensive play that he can make. He was actually – he did the – made the right move, in my opinion, to, to let us do that so he can have the 22 and make a run. We're also on, joined by a team owner of Joe Gibbs Racing, Joe Gibbs. We'll continue with questions. We'll go to Al, Jacob, Kelly, and then Jerry. Yeah, Al Pierce from Auto Week. Chris, for you, not not to short shrift what you've just done, <coughs> but a lot of athletes and coaches say, okay, we're on to the next one. Atlanta's going to be a whole new deal. The rest of the year is going to be a whole new deal. Is it difficult for a crew chief to prepare every week for an aero package and a rules package different from what you had the week before? Yeah, well, I can tell you the unfortunate truth is we probably just lost a day preparing because we're going to be here putting a car in the museum, and that's quite all right with us. But uh, you're exactly right uh, with all the unknowns in NASCAR right now with the rules packages. I think you guys are in for a treat week to week. You're never going to know. Um, everybody's trying to figure it out, and every racetrack is going to be a little bit different. So uh, there's going to be a lot of comers and goers to start the season, but I have so much confidence in the people around us that Joe Gibbs Racing and – FedEx and, and Denny trusting in me um, to, to allow me to, to do this. And we've just got such a strong group around us. I'm just a lucky guy that every now and then gets to jump up and call the play. But in the past three months, it's become so evident to me that it's about the people around you. And I'm just a very small part of that. And let me tell you, this 11 FedEx team has a very good group around them. And, and I couldn't be more excited to get going. I, Not I, tonight, you won't be. I, I don't. I don't mean to discredit this win, <laughs> but I'm always thinking about the next one. No doubt about it. Thank you. Go to Jacob. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport Magazine. Got a couple here. Uh, first for Coach, uh, you were in here earlier in the weekend talking about it, about what it might mean 
if this res this is storybook though i mean what 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 emotions what's going through your mind after this uh, i'd just like to retrace for a minute what happened tonight which is you know it's the most emotional and the biggest win i've ever had in my life in anything uh jd built our race team was the guy that ran day-to-day -day operations for 27 years he invested his occupational life in our race team. And as a part of that, he went up to purchase some late model stuff from Denny and st struck up a relationship with Denny, put him in a test, put him in a, a truck, put him in a Xfinity car at Darlington, and finally he said, we need to sign this guy. And so that started the relationship and everything. And Thank you for that first check, by the way. I got a <laughs> set of rims for my truck and a plasma TV. I was... Of course, living, I was in high. I was the, I was a hit that, in that, my town. That is the truth. He had nothing, okay. <laughs> and three years later, he bought a house next to me that was twice as big as my house. <laughs> so it tells you I get in the wrong end of everything. But I wanted to retrace that, and then to say JD's favorite number was eleven when he raced. That's what he had. Denny's number is eleven. Denny put JD on over the doorpost on that car and to have that take place everything that took place tonight everybody knows we've been to daytona 27 times we had won twice before and so you know you're thinking about things and i guess everybody could say well that just happened now, i don't believe that just happened i honestly believe it was you know i think the lord looked down on us and i know jd and everybody in my family was emotional, a uh, call home to Pat, and I called sponsors that were emotional too. It was just an unbelievable night, uh, unbelievable crowd. The whole thing was just a special memory for me and it's one I'll never forget and it was the most important night of my occupational life. Denny, two parts for you. Uh, number one, I know you were trying on TV to put it into words. The Gibbs family, this win, I mean, what, what does it mean sitting here right now? And, and the second part, what is it with you and new crew chiefs get, bringing them to victory lane in this race? <laughs> yeah. I tell you, I, for one race, he can just hop on the back. I'll carry you in here. But uh, I'm going to need him the rest of the, the, the 35 other ones. Uh, you know, he's, I'll say that, you know, kind of answering last question first, but Chris is just so prepared. I mean, almost information overload. I have to temper him sometimes like, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. I don't need motivation. I don't need any, you know, thank you for the information of all the things that I need, but he's just so prepared and he never leaves. He, you know, just in the, in the couple months I've worked with him, he's just so meticulous about every detail and giving me all the information that I need to, to go out there and succeed. And so, um, you know, that's, that's the kind of guy that you look for that can carry you a long way. And, um, you know, as far as, you know, the, the Gibbs family, it's just uh, great to, you know, hearing that, you know, Joe and everything that he has accomplished in his life. I mean, he's a NFL Hall of Famer and, uh, you know, Super Bowl champion and saying that this is the biggest win of his career is just uh, special. And, and it's just special for me to be able to, you know, deliver that to him in a special way. Uh, I know he would have been happy with any one of his cars going out there and, and getting a victory, but... Obviously, one with his uh, son's name on the door and, and number is probably a little more special. <clears throat> we'll go to Kelly, Jerry, and then up to the press box. Kelly Crandall, Rachel.com. Um, Denny, first off, did I hear correctly over the radio that uh, now that you're a two-time Daytona 500 winner, Michael Waltrip can kiss your ass? Yes. And can you yeah, please explain yeah. that? <laughs> that's the only thing he ever held on my, over my head constantly. <laughs> well, I've got two. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's we're such good friends and and it's you know we play golf all the time everyone knows that but uh yeah you know he was always you know everyone we would always go to these golf tournaments and then he introduced me and then introduced him and he's like you know hey i got two of those i got two <laughs> just think twice as many as you have so not anymore go ahead jerry jerry jordan king tires on that denny for uh your win tonight versus your win a few years ago which one's better, or can you evaluate that yet? And which party would be better? Be better. I, I, I'm taking this one in a little bit more. I was just so, you know, everything was just so crazy at the end of the 2016 race with the final lap, 
how it all played out. I was just, I couldn't believe anything that happened. I, it was in awe the whole time. This one, I actually, through the red flags and everything, I was kind of taking everything in. I, I fell asleep twice and in, in under a couple of the red flags because I just, I was just relaxed. I knew what I needed to do, and I wasn't going to venture off from that. Um, so I wasn't nervous about, hey, w- what if this happens? What if that happens? I knew in my head what I needed to do, and if it, if, if the race worked out great for us, we were going to win. Um, if it didn't, I was, I'd, put, I'd put forth all the homework and done all the work to figure out where I needed to be, and I knew where I needed to be, and um, I, circumstances were, was going to dictate whether we won or not. So I was pretty relaxed the whole time and really taking all this in. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I was feeling pretty bad last time. <laughs> the, the plane ride up was awful for me. So I, I hear I have an extra day for, to prepare. So that's good mm-hmm. news. We're going to go upstairs to the press box and then in the back to Peter. Lee Spencer, RacingVoice.com. Gabe Hart, you're, you're batting 500 at this point. What do you have to do with this team so you don't become complacent now that you're already in the playoffs? Um, <clears throat> complacent is not my vocabulary. We're going to go win 35 more races the way I look at it. People say you can't win every race, and I I disagree. I mean, I show up every weekend to win, and I know uh, Joe Gibbs expects that of us. I know Denny does, and I know my race team does. So. My intent is to win 35 more times, and, and we may fall short, but I'm going to Atlanta to, to get another one. Go on the far back over here, and then we'll go to the left. Great. Thank you. Peter King, CBS News Radio, and this is for Denny uh, back here. And uh, those last 10 laps were like uh, an it hour long. <laughs> Literally. Well, I was going to say not like know, a race. A it was more. It, it was more like Survivor out there. So, tell me, tell me what it was like to uh, be able to avoid those three huge crashes. And I think at last count, we counted thirty-six different cars were involved total with all three of them. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, you know, I was actually looking at the time on the dash. It was five forty something, and I'm like. And, and I'm looking at the scoreboard, and I'm like, wow, at 6.15, we're going to know the, the end of this race. And I look, and I'm like, at 6.30, we're going to know the end of this race. And they're sitting under red flag, and I just see the ticker just going. I'm like, at 6.50, we're going to really know who won this race. So it's, uh, it, was, it was crazy how long it took. And it, I've been in so many different su- super speedway races I've seen you know, five laps take an hour before, but uh, the track was just an absolute mess, uh, especially in three and four with all the crashes. We just were fortunate to really be up front at the right time to avoid those. I mean, we were really one row in front of all the, the, the mayhem uh, the entire time at the end. So uh, that that's a credit to the you know pit call we made at the end to, to get our track position back from the kind of the fueling issue that we had mid-race. But uh, it's just, I mean, you know, sometimes you're, you're fortunate to be in the position you are. We were, we were pretty lucky to be up front at the right time. I'm going to go to Mike, Dominic, and then Nate. Mike Massey, FrontStretch.com. To properly celebrate a win like this, like how do you properly celebrate a win like this when you have that champion's breakfast at like 7.30 tomorrow morning? <laughs> do you stay up all night or do you try to get a few hours of sleep? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've. I've been under the weather a little bit over the last couple of weeks, so I probably won't get too crazy, honestly. Actually, uh, he and I both, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I may have <laughs> believed that or not. Heard that, but uh, it's uh, it's been a tough couple of weeks, you know, you know, just you know, being sick a little bit. So I, I'm I'm not going to get too crazy, but I want the team guys to really enjoy it. I mean, there's a lot of new faces, a lot of the same faces that we've had that were here in 2016 that got to enjoy it, and I just never will forget. Uh, celebrating with them and seeing how excited they were after uh, winning a Daytona 500 because you just honestly you never know right I mean you're a pit crew guy you could be moved to another team and you don't know if you'll you're if you don't will you ever win it again I encourage all those guys to really live in the moment and enjoy it because you know I definitely you know that was some of my fondest memories from the first one was spending it with the team guys we're gonna go to Dominic Nate and then up to the press box Dominic Adagon with the racing experts to your left. So now you've tied Dale Jarrett now on the 20, 20, excuse me, 24th all-time on the wins list. Is that something you take a look at or just kind of comment on what that means to you? 
Wow, he's so much better than I am. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's amazing. Um, never really thought of it uh, that way. Um, those are guys that, I mean, I idolized growing up. I mean, I'm, I shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath as Dale Jarrett. So it's uh, it's crazy that, uh, you know, we, we have the stats that we do. I never would have thought it, you know, in the 14-year career that uh, I'd have one day 2500 champion. I wouldn't have dreamed I'd have 10 wins. I wouldn't have dreamed anything. Uh, that, that's been accomplished, but certainly, um, you know, won't take it for granted. Thanks. Go upstairs to the press box. Jim Utter, motorsport.com. For Denny and Coach, too, if he'd like to address it. When you have such a uh, tragic event, such as J.D.'s passing, happening so close <coughs> to the start of the season, I just wonder uh, <coughs> when it could produce heavy hearts and, and so forth. How did you feel the team approached uh, dealing with that coming down to Daytona? It almost seemed like you guys had a very uh, calming effect the entire speed week. Well, I, I think for me, I just really appreciate everybody. Uh, Chris said it, everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing, it's like a huge family. And I, I want to say that, that NASCAR itself, if you think about everybody in that winner's circle, uh, everybody from NASCAR, Jim France, and everybody all the way down. Uh, I just appreciate that so much. And the other thing that's different about this sport that I really appreciate is our sponsors. And the emotion and everything that's wrapped up in this, uh, FedEx, everybody there, the relationships you develop with them, and you go through tough times, tough year last year, and then they have a – victory like tonight and I appreciate everybody here from FedEx and I got a chance to call Fred Smith and thank him and then Toyota uh, if you think about a partnership like that how much they put into this uh, as a company as big as that company is and all the things they can do they choose to be a part of this sport and this race team and they're a huge part of it I can't thank them enough and so I think I, I I hope we all kind of get that. What's special about this sport is our sponsors and all the relationships and everything that it takes to get to have a good race team. And I just appreciate that so much. And it's always been people that in my life that you appreciate are the people. And so just really thrilled to be a part of a sport like this. I know we've gone through tough times here recently. I'm going to tell you, I swear, I think our best year is in front of us. And we got so many people working so hard right now in our sport. So I'm fired up about it. And this is the only thing me and my family want to do. We, we don't have anything else. So this has to go. We'll go to Nate, John, and then Bob. Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Uh, two quick ones for you, Danny. One, um, the fact that you and Kyle work so well together, there's always a lot of dissection of your relationship. There was the, the number 18 pit stall last year at Miami. Was this validation for that you guys can kind of work together and, and be good teammates, be good teams together? Yeah, I, I really think over the last man, a hand, handful of years, we've really worked well, had a great working relationship. Um, I mean, I, I had forgotten about the Homestead thing, to be, to be honest with you, but... <laughs> Um, I mean, we, we did exactly what we said we were going to do, work together uh, the entire race until 10 laps to go, and then let's, let's go out there and try to get a win. Um, so we, uh, you know, I, I know that he wants it bad. I, I understand, you know, the, the fire that he has to, to win the Daytona 500. Uh, trust me, if I could switch resumes with him, I would, in case I ever had to write one. Um, but uh, he's just uh, he's a great talent. His time's coming. There's no question about it. He's usually getting wrecked out early and never even had an opportunity, uh, you know, to, to be in the position that he was at, at the end of tonight. I think the one advantage that I had had is I'd been in that situation so many times over the last 10 years that I knew where I wanted to be. And um, I'm sure mental notes have been made. And, and obviously, uh, you know, if, if it turns around the other way next year, uh, I'll, I'll congratulate him the same way. And then you know, for you, after a winless 18, I know, you know first time in your career, I think you're set with Gibbs beyond this year. But when you have winless seasons like that, people start asking questions. You've got the new crew chief here with Chris. Maybe both of you could address this. I mean, how important is it to get a win first race out of the box and, and kind of maybe quell some of that? Yeah, I mean, 
I mean, I'm confident in, in everything that we have going here. Uh, I've got a great company in FedEx that has supported me for the last 14 years and believes in me and Joe and his family has, has believed in me. Um, you know, it's not like we weren't competitive. We just didn't win the race. I mean, we were leading on the final restart at Brickyard 400 and the Daytona 500 last year, and circumstances took us out of those races. Uh, you win both of those in the same year, and they, they think you're amazing. So I, we just didn't win the races, and, and I understand that that's very important. But uh, we've been competitive uh, my entire career, and, and I don't see that changing. I know that Chris has uh, you know, got a great plan ahead of us you know, starting the next week at Atlanta. Uh, I've actually got to do some work <laughs> middle – well, maybe I won't do that now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, he had plenty of work for me to do in the middle of this week to, to get prepared for Atlanta. Yeah, we're we're going to have to rewrite this week a little bit, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's, uh, he's prepared, and he knows that uh, – you know, he he wouldn't have took the job if he didn't think he had a competitive driver. So uh, it's good to uh, to go out there and validate all that. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, again, I just can't I can't say enough about the people. I mean, and th this guy is the winningest driver on today's Cup circuit who has not won a championship, and he's come close so many times. Um, and we're going to get him there. But you know, Denny Hamlin not capable of winning with. Joe Gibbs racing behind him and FedEx behind him. And, I mean, I'm the lucky guy. You know, they, they asked me to come in and try to shake it up and put a fresh perspective on it. And I said, sure, I'll jump at the chance because this guy's got what it takes to win at Homestead uh, and win it all, no question about it. And um, if I can be the guy to help provide the spark to get that done, then, then strap on and let's do it. We'll go to John, Bob, and then Beth Ann. John Haverland, New Mexico Motorsports Report to your left. Uh, for Denny and for Coach, um, I just wanted to get your thoughts. Um, were you surprised at how well the 95 ran today? Like he led about a quarter of the race. Yeah, he, he really ran well and, and did a great job in the draft. And really, he was – that's when I talked about we were always one row ahead of the, the mayhem. I, I saw he was right behind me pushing me on one restart, and I actually moved up to, to block him. And the next thing you know, he gets wrecked. So it's like – you know, circumstances, and, and Joe's got a better understanding of why he thinks all that stuff happened today. Uh, but we were very fortunate. But, yeah, he was running great. Obviously, Wheels uh, has a lot of notes from, from what we uh, were successful here with, and, and that car was super, super strong. And it'll be very important for us to have that car uh, running strong and uh, to, to gather more information because, you know, as, as an organization, we don't want to lose a, a, a car. And by – Losing, you know, Furniture Row last year, uh, hopefully that, that 95 team can kind of pick up uh, where they left off. We really kind of hit it off with Bob and their group. I appreciate Toyota and all that they've done over there. I really think we have a great chance to take that team and continue to work with it. I think it's going to take off. I was thrilled for the whole weekend. I kidded Bob. I said, the very first race in that 125 and you kick our rear I says you're not supposed to do that okay back off uh, but really really that isn't a very important partner for us you know we are the small number of Toyota cars so we need that car to step up and I, I was thrilled that they ran the way they did we'll go to Bob Beth Ann and then Holly Bob Pockris Fox Force I have two for Denny first off is there any part of you that's still wondering how the how in the world the Fords couldn't work enough together to beat you? <laughs> uh, they took each other out. It looked like um, I don't know. I, it, you know. The wrecks were always behind us, which I didn't kind of see. But uh, you know, we worked really well together. Um, you know, the Toyotas. Uh, we had a few Hendrick cars help us uh, in, in certain situations as well, which was big. And um, you know, really, it, it just uh, you you can kind of just find your way to the front. I mean, if you can't beat them sometimes you have to join them you have to join the pack that they're in you got to see what they're doing and 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 join them so uh they are very strong they've got some great drivers over there but really the numbers has been the biggest thing that's been uh, the biggest obstacle to beat uh with those guys is that they just have so many of them um the powers and the numbers and so um i, I put our group of four or five up against anyone and uh today you can see you know the the little Little manufacturer has a one, two, three finish. That's a that's a pretty good feat. And also, I think I can politely say that confidence has not been one of your issues. 
But oh, thank you. I, I'm, cur- um. I'm, I'm curious if last year at all did you ever lose any confidence <laughs> with b- by going one less? No, not really, because I was still competitive. I mean, I think we had a string in the middle. I think right when the che, uh, the playoffs were starting, we won like three out of four poles in a row, and we were fast. We just, you know, we struggled in certain situations, and. Um, you know, really, this week, this year, being a whole new, whole new ball of wax, it's just—I mean, it's a complete reset. So um, there was no doubt that you know whether it was last year's package or this year's package, we're we're going to be successful and we're going to win races. Some of the greatest drivers did have had winless seasons. Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, those guys. So I mean, I'm not—I don't—I I was never doubting whether. I was still capable of, you know, winning races, and I'm still not, as you know. <laughs> we'll go to Beth Ann, Holly, and then Caleb. I'm only yeah. 38, by the way. <laughs> Let everyone try to shove me out the door. I'm 38. <laughs> Statistics say 39 is your prime. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> 38 sounds good to me. I wish I were 38 again. Uh, so you're uh, doing just fine. You look 38. We'll love your sweetheart. Anyway, um, you got three in a row this time. Uh, one, two, three, finish. And how is that going to affect uh, not only your team, but the, the whole uh, Joe Gibbs racing team? And another thing, uh, I'd also like to take you back to that letter you wrote as a child about winning the championship and that promise you made to Joe uh, about bring him one of those how do you feel this year with this kind of start toward getting that goal yeah the, the one two three finish is great i i, I can't remember did we have a one two three at in 2016 i, I think, think i think we did um i'm not i'm not too sure but uh there was always um i mean there's there's gonna be one excited one and two that you know think about what could have been obviously and you know luckily we're on the good end of that but uh Certainly, as an organization, these are the these are the days that you hope for. So, um, I, and Joe can kind of touch on that, but I know it's really big for everyone at the shop to have, um, you know, a Daytona 500 victory, no matter who wins it, because everyone has their fingerprints on every single race car. Uh, there are no team guys when we enter that race shop, so uh, it's a team victory, and uh, you know we treat it that way. We'll go to Holly, Caleb, and then Matt. Holly Kane, the NASCAR Wire Service. Denny, we talked about this at Media Day, but you got the first win here as a rookie. You've won two Daytona 500s. I think you're one of only two active drivers with multiple Daytona 500 victories at this point. Would you concede this is a place that you feel pretty good at in this style of racing, and could you just talk about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's something about Daytona that just fits, you know, whatever I do. You know, it's my style or whatever. I mean, to, to be have won I think not, this is our ninth win at Daytona in different series and clashes and things like that it's just uh I never would have dreamed winning nine times at Daytona so this is uh just one that uh, this one's extra special but you know I just think I've gotten smarter as I've gotten older about you know where the things that I need to do I mean really it took past failures over the last few years of not winning the Daytona 500 and learning from those circumstances that put me in the situation tonight to put myself in the right situation to go out there and win. So um, it's just uh, years of experience helps with all that. Uh, but as far as the first win here uh, as a rookie, that was had to be complete luck. I have no uh, other explanation. <laughs> Thanks. We'll go to Caleb and then Matt and Mike. Caleb Whistler kicking the tires a lot, net um, for Coach or Denny. Uh, this is uh, the 100th Cut Series victory for Joe Gibbs Racing in a Toyota. How special is it for you to have 100 wins with one manufacturer coming in the sport's biggest race? It's it's really great for us. The relationship we have with Toyota, the partnership, uh, the friends and that, that have developed over our period of time with them, it's a special deal for us, special for them. And to realize, like I said, you got a company like that could be doing a million different things around the world. And for them to choose to be in our sport is just a huge deal, I think, for us, the sport. They're great partners for us. And the big thing is they want to win. We've gone through this year quite a bit with J.D. 
Uh, Coy coming over now is a, a big part of, you know, him moving over when JD <coughs> got sick. Uh, so we've had a lot of change, and then we bring in Martin this year. There's been a lot going on, but our people there, I think, at the at the race team, we've got a lot of people been there with us 20 years, really, and uh, a lot of those in the management team. So uh, it's our Chris mentioned it. It's our people. You win with people, and we were certainly got great partners. Go to Matt on the far left side. Matt Corson with the RacingExperts.com. For Denny, it's my understanding your 2016 win car currently sits in your living room at home. Will this one be going back there next year when it comes out of the museum? And for Coach, are you going to let him have it? <laughs> First of all, he already threatened to bill me for the car I wrecked in the clash <laughs> practice. <laughs> That's a side story. Nobody That's was okay. supposed to know that. <laughs> Honestly... I will tell you the absolute truth. I did get ticked off, okay? so. Oh, no, I, I knew. The upper lip was trembling when you were talking to me. I go in there, and at some point in there, Coy and I are sitting in there, and I said, and you're going to pay for that car, too. I gave him one of those, and so I walked out in the winner's circle there. I, I walked up to him, and I said, ah, forget that on the car. I got it covered. <laughs> I don't know. That's we, a true we, story. We got to talk about this one for sure. This is a, this is a special car for sure, but... You know, I, I think this is probably a special car for uh, his, his family as well. So, um, it would like I'd like to if I don't have it, I definitely would like to see him uh, keep it and uh, you know do something with it. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to take care of this. Yeah, we will. We'll take care of that car. Go to Mike. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. This is for Chris and Denny both. Uh, we saw three days of racing where it was a parade around the top of the track. And today, from the beginning, we had two lines, and they were both pretty competitive. And the bottom even seemed to be better as it got late enough in the night. Uh, was Jim France's request part of that? <laughs> or was it more of the heat of the day making the top not as advantageous as it had been? take that softball or me yeah uh, yeah you go ahead I'll, I'll be glad to you this is the daytona 500 you got the sports best the 36 or four, 36 drivers out there and racetracks heated up 50 degrees and it's time to get after it you know this 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 one counts and not only does it count but it's the biggest one of the year and anybody who thought they were going to line up and ride around the top for the daytona 500 for 490 miles and miles <laughs> It doesn't doesn't know the competitive nature of these guys. So I la I chuckled them with my guys on the intercom uh, um, five laps into the race when they're too wide and you can see the cars sliding around and getting runs. I'm like, oh yeah, they anybody who thought this thing was going to line up and be boring's <laughs> got another thing coming. And needless to say, that was the case. So uh, it's just a whole other thing, you know. Daytona 500, you know, with everybody out there trying to get after it, it's not going to be boring. Do we have any final questions for our Daytona 500 champions? All right, Coach, thanks. Denny, and Chris, congratulations, and Thank thanks you. for joining us tonight. Thank hey, you. thanks to everybody yeah. out there.